What is on and popping? My family of weird ones out there and welcome back to the channel. So welcome to the October astrology video. So in this video, we basically go over the astrology for everybody, no matter what sign you are for the month of October and talk about how it could affect all of us, what we will all see no matter who you are in your lives and what we could also see in the world as well. October is going to be the start of a very very crazy turbulent next few months you guys this is the other part of 2021 besides the beginning that is like the biggest time of this year astrologically speaking and we saw what happened in the beginning of the year and how crazy and chaotic that was we are definitely going to see some chaotic themes coming up again and october really starts that off i think this is like the segue into the next few months that will lead into 2022 and will be insane so we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about what I think is going to come, what I think we will all see. Let's go ahead and get into it. So starting off the month of October, we are, boom, already in a Mercury retrograde that started on September 27th. Most of October, we are going to be in Mercury retrograde. And if you want to know like a lot of details about that Mercury retrograde itself, plus what this specific Mercury retrograde is going to bring up in the world and in all of our lives, definitely go check out my Mercury retrograde video that I did. Did. I went super in depth and talked about all of the crazy shit that's going to happen. But basically, Mercury is retrograding in the sign of Libra. And so we are really reflecting on our relationships, considering others, how to find middle ground, how to keep the peace. Relationships in all of our lives are under a massive reflection right now. Now, to add to this Mercury retrograde, we have Mercury retrograde squaring Pluto for these first couple weeks of it. And it will come back around and square Pluto towards the end of October and to November. What this means is it is digging up a lot of deep shadowy stuff, okay? So if you don't know how to do shadow work, you're gonna wanna start doing some shadow work, okay? Spiritually, that is how you grow. That is how you heal spiritually. If you ever are feeling stuck in your spiritual journey, you got the crystals, you got the tarot cards, you you know had some cool spiritual experiences, but now you're like, okay, now what? Shadow work, that is what actually brings you closer to who you really are, your authentic self, and where you actually start feeling growth and progress in your spiritual journey. And if you want a really, really in-depth analysis and video, you can see my video. It's no bullshit, so go check that out. But anyways, Mercury Square Pluto is bringing up a lot of shadows, you guys. It is bringing up a lot of deep hidden things, deep hidden truths that need to be faced. Corruption and scandalous behavior in the world in general, big legal cases, a lot of corruption within people in power power and within people that are wealthy. But on a personal level, you're going to see this in your life playing out where you are having to address deep stuff like whether it is trauma, pain, things that you're keeping sh hidden from yourself and your shadow is going to be reflected back to you from other people. Everybody is going to be like a mirror right now. And I always say this, but Libra is like a fun house of mirrors, right? And so it, it literally reflects to you the side that you're not seeing, the side that is not being talked about, the side that is needed to balance the scales because that is what Libra is, an artistic master at helping people People see the side that they are not seeing. For this reason, Libra can also play the devil's advocate. A lot of people think Libra is kind of like soft and sweet and this, that, and the other, but there's another side to Libra, right? Libra is definitely about duality, polarity. And Libra has a very beautiful and intelligent way of wearing the hat that will balance the situation, even if it's not attached to the situation. You have to think, Libra is between Virgo and Scorpio, right? Virgo, the Virgin, and Scorpio, the Scorpion, <laughs> dealing with darkness and the shadow itself, it is transitioning us from the lightest time of the year, starting to go into the underworld, the dark time of the year, to fall. So Libra is that in-between place of light and dark, so it can play either role. So that is the beauty of Libra. It is showing us the mask that we wear, where we are trying to keep the peace, trying not to rock the boat, trying to avoid conflict or avoid offending others. But Pluto and Capricorn squaring Mercury retrograde off and on throughout like the next month or so is really showing us the deep things underneath. And it's helping us to address 
confrontational and controversial topics in an easy and elegant manner. For a lot of people, you may be seeing your exes come back around or you may be seeing very deep and important conversations from the past or even from recently resurfacing so you can talk about it on a deep level. You may be noticing more where you're a little bit overly considerate or you're not considerate enough of other people's thoughts or opinions, right? You may be noticing where you try to toe a certain line to keep the peace or to not upset others, where maybe you need to be true to yourself. This Libra season is bringing a lot of truth. It is bringing a lot of hard truth, a lot of deep truth. This can definitely be a time where we are seeing things from a different side, our minds are changing about things that we previously thought we knew, true intentions are being shown, and massive relationship changes, growth, healing, but also a certain sense of letting go can happen in relationships as well. So we start off the month, the first few days of the month with Mercury squaring Pluto again, but also on the very first of the month, we have the moon opposite Saturn as well and Venus sextiling Pluto. So I think something possibly big could happen on the first or it could just be a shit day for some, but there's definitely, it definitely appears like there's going to be major opposition. It could involve somebody that's kind of like a leader or somebody that is kind of like well known because the moon's going to be in Leo. And I mean, this could be nothing, but it looks like a pretty intense day with Mercury squaring Pluto again, moon opposite Saturn. It looks like either some deep information could be revealed um, or there could be some kind of opposition, whether in the world or in our own lives, we could see these themes. Then moving on to the sixth, the sixth is a really, really big day. Okay, we have Venus at 29 degrees Scorpio, but also we have a Libra new moon. And I'm gonna do a separate video on that for each sign. So be watching out for that. But that Libra new moon is actually insane, you guys. We have Mars conjunct that Libra new moon. And Mars doesn't like to be in Libra, right? Mars is opposite from its home. And then we also have Pluto going direct that day. So that's gonna be some major shifts just in the first week of October. Okay, like you're gonna get a pretty good idea of how your October is going to go just in that first week, right? Where we have that big shift, that big change, um, where things are coming to light, truths are revealed, there's like an unveiling, but there's also possibly some restriction or tension um, in the air. And then we have that Libra new moon, which is like a new beginning that we're trying to start, but do you remember Mercury's retrograde? So it's almost like we're starting something that's not over yet or that we may have to come back to or there's something new happening that we may have to come back to, right? And there is a major intense shift happening around that new moon. So we'll talk about it in the Libra new moon video. So then on the seventh, we have Venus finally moving out of Scorpio and into Sagittarius, which will, I think, help because with all this Libra energy, Venus rules the sign of Libra and Venus is instead will move into Sag where we will have a more optimistic, higher outlook on things. We will be feeling a little bit more like, you know, we will be wanting to learn things a little bit more. We will be looking at things from a bigger angle a little bit more, but it could really, really bring up some really big themes of politics, the legal system, laws being passed or trying to be passed. Something like that will be very prevalent in the month of October with Venus and Sag and all this Libra energy. Politics will be a really big deal, but Venus will move across the South Node as soon as it moves into Sag. So, so like the 7th from like the 14th, pay attention because Venus will be on the south node and so there could definitely be some past stuff coming up uh, some past relationships coming up some past issues coming up some past financial stuff coming up or even certain uh losses financially as well um in like a more like political sense i guess you could say we could see finances being a really big deal around that time with venus and sag and all this libra energy on the ninth we will have the mercury kazemi which basically means mercury and the sun will be at the same degree in the sky and that is when venus will be exactly conjunct the south node so around the ninth we could have like this light bulb moment we could start really filling in the blanks or get some kind of revelation have some kind of realization start connecting the dots you know seeing patterns and seeing what needs to be done or redone but there could definitely be some information revealed or uh like i said like a, a moment of clarity um, but some big information could be revealed around that time or brought to 
light around that time, whether financially, with relationships, uh, you know, something along those lines could be what some of this information could be about. So watch out for the ninth. That's a big big uh, day. So then on the 10th, we have Saturn moving direct. So Saturn has been retrograde for quite a few months now. So in the sign of Aquarius, so wherever Aquarius is in your chart, you've been kind of going back and reflecting, revisiting certain things, rethinking certain things about how to progress in that area of your life. And so now that Saturn is moving direct, there is going to be a shift of forward momentum now with that. So it will start feeling like, you know, things are moving forward. So then from like the 13th to the 22nd, the Sun and Mars will be squaring Pluto. And these are going to be some intense days, okay? So not only is this Mercury retrograde pulling information out of the darkness with Pluto, but then the Sun's going to be illuminating it that much more, and Mars is going to be uh, in some kind of conflict with it. And so there is definitely going to be some tensions arising during that time period from the 13th around till around the 22nd, you know, darkness to light, some kind of expose, uh, a leader exposed possibly for something dark or criminal, power moves and power dynamics. And then with Mars squaring Pluto, um, we could also see conflicts protests, people coming together for some kind of common cause or some kind of social justice or some kind of legal battle going on around that time. So I'll be really interested to see what happens on those days. So then on the 18th, Mercury will finally move direct, meaning that it gets out of its retrograde. Uh, it will start moving forward again and Jupiter will move direct on that same day. And I think that that really could be some kind of sign or something along those lines saying that like, oh, okay, we see things from a higher perspective now. We are now moving forward. We've reflected on what we've needed to reflect on. We've gone back and redone what we needed to redo. And our thinking, our beliefs, our mind frames about a lot of things will be shifting by that point or have already shifted by that point. And so then there will be like a forward momentum. And the 20th, we'll have a full moon in Aries, which I will do a separate video on. I love Aries full moons because they do bring a lot of confidence and empowerment and just like feeling more direct and we could use a break from all that Libra energy and focus a little bit more on the self and the individual. Um, and so we will go over that when I do the Aries full moon video. So then around the 22nd to the 26th, you want to watch out because Venus is going to square Neptune. Okay, so, but they are both in Jupiter signs, which I think is a, does count for something. It does make it like, oh, okay, like, you know, this may not be as bad as it could be, right? But still, they are in a square. And so you really want to watch out for overdoing something or fantasizing about something. There could be a lot of illusion and delusion around that time. You could overspend or just overdo, take something like a little bit too far or have these like grandiose ideas about things that may not be realistic and so um, but it can be a really good time for optimism and faith and belief getting really creative and artistic and possibly some kind of spirituality and healing but so yeah watch out for those themes around the 22nd to the 26th i've also noticed with venus square neptune there could be like a spell breaking around that time where you are kind of breaking this spell or this delusion that you've been under not like literally per se like you're breaking a spell that was put on you or something but but that you are more like a spell that you put yourself under like metaphorically, right? Like something that you've been under an illusion um, about and haven't been seen clearly around that time, you could snap out of it and be like, whoa, like I'm actually seeing this clearly now. So, so on the 23rd is when we get into Scorpio season because the sun will move into Scorpio, which is a big deal because then it will start the endless parade of planets, well not endless, but the next like month or so of parades of planets squaring Saturn and opposing Uranus from Scorpio, which I think is going to be a massive, massive deal, okay? Uh, so the sun in Scorpio will start squaring Uranus around the 23rd until probably about like the 30th, and Mars will come in right at the 30th and start the cycle all over again. 
And so I think what we could see here with the Sun square Saturn from Scorpio are censorship, power moves, power dynamics, possible restrictions. I think that we could also see an uprising against a certain leader or somebody in charge. And honestly, next month in November, that astrology is hitting Biden's chart like so effing crazy, you guys. I showed it over on Instagram and I saved my stories and my 2021 highlights. But if you want to go look at it, but that freaking new moon in Scorpio and the lunar eclipse in Taurus in November or are hitting his chart in such a major way. Like, I honestly think that something will be happening around that time with him. And I could see a lot of people or a lot of uprisings against him for some reason around that time. I would not be shocked to see it with Saturn and Aquarius squaring the sun in Scorpio. Biden is a Scorpio sun. So that's going to be really interesting. This is also happening in his houses of health and wellness and endings and self-sabotage and secrets and stuff like that. So self-undoing, we'll see how it comes up, but definitely let me know down below if you guys see any of these things at all before then or remember this, um, mark it down and remember that I said it because I really do think something is gonna happen with him around that time. Not sure what it is and I don't wanna jump to conclusions, but I just know what the themes are going to be. So anyway, so then on the 30th, like I said, we have Mars and Scorpio and then the sun is gonna start opposing Uranus. So definitely some unpredictability, some unexpectedness, some randomness, some craziness, um, definitely possibly some conflicts, wanting to move forward, but feeling restricted at the same time. Um, power dynamics, once again, you know, who has the power and who doesn't? And it's just gonna get really crazy like end of October into November. So watch out, chaos is gonna be insane. Yeah, you guys, that is it for this October 2021 astrology video. Let me know down below, you guys, if you see any themes this month. Uh, the timestamps will be down below to, you know, skip around to whatever time frame you wanna skip to. Uh, but definitely keep these dates in mind because these are the big dates for this month where you will likely notice the most happening um, in your life and in the world in general. So uh, I really love to hear your guys' feedback down below and hear if any of these themes come up in your life, hear your stories, all of that. It really just helps me as an astrologer to know, uh, you know, where I'm wrong or where I'm right or where I missed something, you know, things like that. It's not just about like, oh, I want to be right. Like it just helps me learn as well as an astrologer. And I'm a big ass astrology nerd. So I mean, I love hearing people's feedback on what happens and, uh, you know, in regards to the astrology anyway. So anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. Keep an eye out for my uh, October 2021 sign horoscope and readings video uh, that will be out within the next few days after you're seeing this. So be on the lookout, make sure your notifications are on and I will see you guys in my other videos.